Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome back to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we are going to continue our Learn to Play series for the American Destroyers by taking a look at Tier 8's USS Benson. It's taken me a while to get this video series kind of going. King of the Sea jumped in the middle, and then we had holidays and everything, so I apologize for the delay. But the good news is, is that, well, Benson was really the sticking point. I, it took me a long time to get a game in Benson that I felt was kind of worthy of displaying, worthy of showing off the ship. And it wasn't... We'll talk about why that is, right? Because the short version is that once upon a time, Benson was a fearsome Tier 8 destroyer. But almost more than any other Tier 8 destroyer in the game, this ship has not aged well at all. She's been very much left behind. And it means that she's much more challenging to play in the modern era of World of Warships, here we are in 2022, than she was when the game released back in 2015. So if you leveled through this line a long time ago, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But if you're trying to level through the American Destroyer line now, and you're at this tier, and you're going, OMG, what a struggle... Believe me, I understand and I feel you. And we're going to talk about some hopeful ways that you can work around and, and alleviate and maybe you can play the ship to help that grind be a little less painful. So <clears throat> let's take a quick walk around and talk about how Benson, what her stats are, how she fits in with her contemporaries and how that impacts how the ship plays. Starting off with survivability. 18,200 hit points you see there is fully buffed, of course, with survivability expert. Base health on this ship is is 15,400. It's not best in tier. It's not worst in tier. It is, I'd say it's on the low end, right? It's it's probably in the lower the lower half, probably bottom half of the, of the tier 8 destroyers. So if you remember when we talked about Farragut, and the, it's been a while since the Farragut video played, so I apologize, but, um, you know, Farragut suffered from basically being a gunboat and not having a, a, a significantly large health pool to go with it. Benson kind of suffers from the same problem a little bit as well here at tier 8. So you got to keep that in mind. Um, it's not an amazing health pool. When you buff it up, yeah, she gets very competitive, right? And and there are definitely ships in this tier that she doesn't mind necessarily taking a gunfight against in the right situation. But like, you know, the lesson you learned playing Farragut, which was protect your health early, jealously, pick and choose your gunfights a very in early in a game and save as much of your health as you can to the middle and the late game still applies here to Benson, and it has all to do with uh, that 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 low-ish health pool. Absolutely, armor layout. <laughs> There's no armor on this ship. What are you talking about? You've got 19 millimeters of plating, and as as before, even the little 120 millimeter pop guns that the European destroyers mount in this in this tier and, and that you'll run into will full pin this ship. Everything that shoots at you damages you. Welcome to the life of an American destroyer. Just just the way it is. Maneuverability and concealment. Now, here is where Benson starts to excel, all right? 38 knots base speed. You see there, I'm basically a 40-knot ship with the speed flag on. That is really, really nice for this tier. Um, Benson, uh, this, this the Benson-class ship here is the, let's see, one, two, three, fourth, fifth, fifth, ties for fifth fastest destroyer in Tier 8. There are a whole lot of destroyers in this tier that are 35 knots. There are a couple that are 33 knots. I'm looking at you, Akazuki. And a whole bunch that are 36. And we're quite a bit faster than that. The only ships in this tier that are faster than Benson are um, the Russians. That's Kiev. Both French destroyers, Fantasca and Tarib, as you would expect. And then uh, Vittorio Cuniberti over in the Italian line. That's it. Everybody else is slower than you or, at worst, even to you, even with you, and I'm looking at you, uh, kid and Lo Yang, which and Lo Yang is basically a Benson Hull, so that shouldn't shock you. So yeah, speed is something this ship does really well. 570 on the turning circle, 2.7 on the rudder shift means that again, like most of the American destroyers, she handles well. She retains that American engine handling characteristic. We talked about this um, back in the early some of the earlier videos where she's very responsive to engine commands when you pull the brake, right? When you cut her speed. She settles very quickly. That gives you a little more maneuverability, cuts that turning circle radius down so you can turn faster to avoid torpedoes or whatever you need to avoid. But yeah, speed is definitely an asset that this ship has that allows her to get out of trouble 
in many situations, not all, but many situations that other destroyers in her tier can't escape from quite as quickly. So that's one, one thing in your arsenal you've got to keep in your back pocket. As we go to look at concealment, we find some good news. Benson's concealment, full stealth rig is 5.8 kilometers. That is really competitive for tier eight. Like it's right in it's right in the middle. There's only a handful of ships, and most of them are premium Japanese destroyers that are better in detection than this ship. So, you know, it's it's a nice change, right? We talked about you know Farragut, the extreme challenge of playing a ship that has a very low health pool and worse than tier detection. Benson, a little similarity to to, to Farragut in that her health pool is not amazing, but her detection is significantly better. Than, uh, than Farragut and Mahan because here starting at tier 8 I get to mount concealment module in slot 5. So it makes all the difference in the world. This ship can is, has a much easier time of picking and choosing the gunfights when she wants to get detected than, um, than Farragut did down at tier 6 because Farragut, for example, would run into tier 8 ships in her matchmaking that get the concealment module and of course Farragut doesn't get that. Benson does and it really, really, it really, really benefits the ship a lot. Um, there's a whole lot of ships in tier eight that are way worse than this in detection. There's a handful that are better. And those better ones are all ships you gotta you gotta be very, very careful of and very, very frosty for. I'm looking at you, Lightning and Cossack and Kagero and Asashio, right? And even the Japanese destroyers, right? Even though those guns all have a very long reload to them, when they land all six shells and they have the, the accuracy to do it. They will hurt, right? Picking a gunfight with a full health Japanese destroyer in a mid or, mid or late game when you're beat up is probably a losing proposition if that guy knows what he's doing, right? So a good Japanese destroyer player can still outshoot you because his alpha damage on his shells is so high to make up for his low, his slow reload. So he'll outspot you. Be very careful when, uh, you know, there's, again, Cossack is definitely somebody you got to look out for. The Japanese, all the Japanese destroyers um, and Lightning as well. Pretty much... Uh, Lightning and Cossack are big threats, and then the Japanese a little less so because you'll have an easier time getting away from the Japanese depending on the tactical situation. But yeah, your detection is a huge benefit. Um, that concealment module really, really, really improves how this ship plays. Main battery. You can uh, pretty much, you know this song and dance by now. Benson's main battery comprised of five turrets of American 5-inch 38 single-barreled guns here, two, two forward, one amidships, and two on the aft end. So yeah, this is the same, very nearly the same turret layout we had on uh, Mahan. Uh, and so, yeah, it's basically the same. Now, what's different? The gun reload is better. The gun reload is better. Let's have a quick look at the base reload, but I think it is, I'm going to check this real fast. I'm going to find it on the list. Yeah, this says 3.3. That sounds about right. So Mahan Still stuck with that uh, that four second reload. Benson now finally gets the full on uh, twenty, uh, you know, eighteen whatever rounds per minute uh, reload that this barrel was particularly known for uh, in the war. So yeah, three point three second reload means that you have a really, really, really competitive DPM number. Uh, five barrels on a three point three second reload. Let's look at her HE DPM, one hundred and thirty thousand. Like that's very, very competitive. Uh, it's quite good. It's not best in tier. You know, there's too many ships like Akazuki and, and uh, you know, uh, Cossack and all that running around. But it's still quite good. It's in the top half of, of destroyers. The trick is, and, and, and I've said this up and down the line, and I'm, I'm going to continue to say it here. You've got to be very, very deliberate, uh, deliberate about when you choose to accept a gunfight. To, to quote Kenny Rogers, you've got to know when to hold them and know when to fold them. And this is a trait you should have been working on as you played up the line. And never more is it more important to learn than here at Tier 8. Because Tier 8, you're now going to start to get Tier 10 matchmaking, right? You're going to start to see a lot more radar. You're going to start to see some really, really predatory high-tier destroyers. You've got to learn what gunfights you can, you can get into and what gunfights you basically have to smoke and run like a scared little puppy with your tail between your legs. Because... Some gunfights you simply will not win, no matter how hard you try. Again, hopefully that's a skill you've been cultivating up to this point, because you're going to need it. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time looking, looking at your port screen going, man, what the hell just happened? <laughs> um, 
11.6 kilometer range. Uh, if memory serves, that's pretty competitive to Mahan. It's very rare you'll be firing at things at that range outside of, you know, big, fat, slow battleships that you can hit. Um, and, and again, you're, you're, I wouldn't worry too much about the dispersion. Your rate of fire means that, you know, if one salvo, if your salvo misses or your stells don't go quite where you want them, the next salvo is only three seconds behind. So, I mean, sooner or later, you're going to land enough shells to, to do some damage or to light some fires or whatever you're after. Torpedoes. This is an area where Benson is very much a mixed bag, okay? For the first time, an American destroyer gets five tube launchers. I have quintuple launchers here, mounted on the center line. So, gone is Mahan's very flexible, very favorable 3x4 torpedo loadout, where you had a left, you know, a port launcher, a starboard launcher, and a center line launcher of four tubes each. Um, now I'm stuck with two quintuple launchers. That's both a blessing and a curse. It's a blessing because, well, that's a lot of torpedoes, right? And you can do a lot of damage with these torpedoes. The bad news is, because they're quintuple launchers, they have a very, very, very long reload. You see there, it's 122 seconds, over two full minutes to wait for these torpedoes to come back. On top of that, look how slow they are. That 58 knots is with a buff. These torpedoes I'm pretty confident. I'm going to double check this before I say it. Let me look. Uh, da, 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 Benson. Yeah. These torpedoes have a base speed of 55 knots. That 58 tells me I've got either the, the, the torpedo module mounted or with a commander skill or something. So they're ticked up a little bit, but they are painfully slow. 58 knots is not good. Okay. The only thing they have going for them really is the alpha damage is nice. You see there's 16.6. And the detection means that they're fairly hard to detect. A 1.1 kilometer detection married to this speed gives an opposing ship a little less than eight seconds of reaction time to when these torpedoes are normally spotted. Um, 9.2 kilometers is also not amazing for range, but if you played through Mahan, you should be used to that by now. So the good news is you have better detection to work with than Mahan. The bad news is the torpedo situation is, is arguably worse. Um, yeah, Benson is... One of the reasons Benson is challenging to play is that you don't have enough health to be accepting gunfights with any destroyer that comes along. Your guns are really good, but your health pool is is only average. So depending on the opponent, you may come out of that limping if you win at all. To make up for it, your torpedoes, unfortunately, aren't also anything to write home about. They're okay. If anything, I'd say these are below average torpedoes for the tier, especially when you compare them to Cossack or most Japanese torpedoes or even the Italians, right? Um, the Italian torpedoes have the benefit that they come back relatively quickly compared to this, right? And I think it's, only, I think it's 90 seconds for Cuniberti. Yeah. And 90 seconds sounds terrible, but compared to two minutes, 90 seconds is amazing. So yeah, these are, these are really challenging torpedoes to use guys. Um, when you're shooting these at upper like battleships that are higher tier than you stuff that can do 30 knots, uh, you're going to struggle to land these. The advice that I would give you to use these is the same advice that I'm going to give you as we move on up the line, particularly with Fletcher. Learn to stagger your launches. There are, are occasions where vomiting out all 10 torpedoes in one salvo is the right answer. But in most cases, you will be better served to stagger them. Fire a rack, wait 40 to 60 seconds. Fire a rack, wait 40 to 60 seconds for that first rack to reload fire it again. Keep that up. If you keep cycling them every, you know, 60-ish seconds or so, you will be doing yourself a little more of a service. You're more likely to land hits, in my experience. There are times that's not always possible, and I get it, but it, in, in my opinion, that's kind of the optimal way to use these torpedoes. Um, they're a real challenge, guys. They really are, and uh, you're going you to, when you get to Fletcher at Tier 9, and you get better torpedoes, it's going to feel so different, but at Tier 8, you're going to suffer, and it can't, it can't be helped. I, I'm just sorry. Depth charges. Now, we've, uh, we're continuing to recoup, right? Remember, Farragut was kind of the low point in terms of depth charges. We only had two racks of six. I think we went up to two racks of eight at Mahan. Now here at Benson, two racks of 10 on a 40-second reload. This is really, really nice. This means by the time you get, putting, you get done putting out bombs, you only have to wait about 20, 25 seconds for the next rack to, for that rack to reload. Um, and you've got another rack ready to go, like, and these bombs hit like trains. This is a really, 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 really good destroyer hunter, guys. Like, I mean, sorry, submarine hunter. Um, when you, once you have a, the position of a submarine kind of known, it's fixed, uh, you have 
excellent tools to wipe that guy out. Between your handling, your speed, you can close the distance on him if he's trying for down the throat torpedo shots, and your destroy your depth charges will absolutely maul any submarine you come across. It is it is a thing of beauty. One of the things, and we'll talk about, uh, we're certainly going to talk about it with Fletcher, but I'll mention it here, because the high end of the American line really fits this bill. The American destroyers tend to be a little bit of jack-of-all-trades, master of none. If you sit down and you start running numbers, what you discover is that the American destroyers do a lot of jobs decently. In some cases, they do a couple of jobs well, and the other jobs okay, so-so, average, right? It means that in almost any situation you can put an American destroyer in, it probably has a tool or a button or the ability to compete or contribute. The bad news is, is that it makes it, it means that they can't really special. It, it, it's not true. You can specialize them in the high at nine and ten, and we'll talk about that later. But it means that playing them to a specific strength, building the ship to a specific strength is nearly impossible. Because there's not one thing you can point to and say, this ship does this thing really, really well, and I'm going to build for that. The American destroyers don't really have that. They do a lot of things, either average or maybe a little above average, or in some cases, well above average. But they don't do, they almost, to almost none of them just like really excel at something. It's one of the things that makes the line fun, but it's also one of the things that makes the line challenging. So if you're looking for a ship that gives you a lot of tools to use in a lot of different situations, hey, you've come to the right place. If you're looking for a line of ships that really excels at gunfights or really excels at torpedoes or has badass AA or is really good at hunting submarines or whatever, mm, you're not quite there. This is probably not the line for you. Anti-aircraft fire. This is definitely an upgrade for Mahan, okay? Or from Mahan. We're looking at, I believe you're seeing five flak puffs there because I think I've taken Fearless Brawler. We'll have a peek at that in a minute. Um, Benson should ordinarily have, I think, four flak puffs. Um, and then uh, outer bubble, 97, and only an inner bubble. No mid-range bubble here on Benson, and we saw this on Mahan. You don't get Bofors until you get, to, you get to Fletcher. And it's one of the things that makes AA Benson still feel a little underwhelming. With that said, that long-range bubble is nothing to sneeze about. And she still gets defensive fire, which is the best defensive fire in the game, right? That, that plus 100 rather than plus 50. I still build my American Destroyers for AA, even at this tier, even today. And again, I'll say, I've said it, I don't think I've said it every video, and I'll say it again. You take defensive fire, you sink a few points into the AA, and then when there's a carrier in the game, you are prepped and ready to deal with him. And if there's not a carrier in the game, who cares? There's not a carrier in the game. You should already be happy as a destroyer player. There's not a carrier in the game. What are you giving up for that? You're giving up speed boost. Benson is already one of the fastest tier 8 destroyers in the game. Already. So, I mean, you're giving up speed boost, but you're already really fast for the tier. So, like, are you really giving up that much? I don't think so. Personal opinion. That's how I play it anyway. Um, so, yeah. Let's have a quick look at commander skills, then we'll go look at the rest. So, yes. Um, again, the, the standard, right? Primitive maintenance. Uh, last Stand, Survivability Expert, Concealment, and Adrenaline Rush. That's where I would spend my first 13 points. I have taken Consumable Specialist here for the extra bonus to my Defensive Fire Reload. I want that, that skill to come back a little quicker. I've taken Fearless Brawler. I mostly take Fearless Brawler for the extra flak, but the extra main battery reload time doesn't hurt me when I do choose to pick a gunfight. That gets my gun reload down under three seconds. That's pretty nice on five barrels. Um... And then I've taken main battery and a specialist, which is where that uh, that extra that that uh, three point two second reload comes from. That little five percent buff drops it down a bit, and I'm getting a little more AA damage. This is a skill that I really really like at the high end of the American Destroyer line. You're going to see me take this on Fletcher as well. Um, and yeah, I love this skill because you're getting a, a straight up main battery buff, and then your A is getting a little better, and you're you're just you're pumping those numbers up before you push defensive fire. So that when defensive fire is active, it is your carrier be gone button, and it is it works brilliantly. Um, other valid options. I would not necessarily take Swift Fish, although it's not a bad choice. Fill the Tubes is not a terrible skill for this ship, right? You would take 12 seconds off that torpedo reload. You get it down to about 110 seconds. Um, it's not terrible. You could do a lot worse. Uh, the trouble is that you cannot take the upgrade slot 6 that would, that would bring the reload down even further. 
Um, so you're stuck at that 110. So for me, for three points, that extra 12 second reload, especially on these slow torpedoes, just doesn't feel worth it. So I don't like this skill, but if you prefer it, you do you. Swiftfish for two points, that extra five knots, extra 5% coupled with the torpedo module, and we'll go look at that in a minute, would bump the speed on these torpedoes up just over 60 knots. That starts to get into competitive territory. So this is not a bad place to sink two points into if you have it. Um, I would not invest in turret traverse. Flood chance, yeah, you could do worse if you've got a point laying around here for liquidator. Um, again, demolition expert. Again, if you like this skill, you do you. Um, for me, you send out enough shells, eventually you're going to light a fire, just the way it is. I wouldn't take, I would not take range. Um, priority target is never a bad skill for destroyers. It never hurts to know who's shooting at you. Um, swift in silence. I mean, if you want to be faster, maybe, but I don't like the main battery reload penalty. Again, it would only be about a tenth of a second. So you could do worse, right? This is not a bad skill for a high tier American destroyer whose guns already reload very, very quickly. Um, I don't believe in Dazzle. I wouldn't take it. We've talked about that before, but you know, to your, your flavoring, if you like this skill, you go right ahead. Quick look at modules. Let's see. I got to go to equipment like so. Um, again, um, main armaments modification one in slot one, concealment in slot five. Those are basically your gimmies. You're almost always going to go with that. These three middle slots are kind of your choice. All right. Um, as we've talked about before, I take I like taking defensive AA in slot two. I know people, a lot of people don't like this. They prefer engine room or engine boost and not to take defensive fire at all. That's fine. You've heard me explain why I build these ships for AA. I won't repeat myself again, but that's what I do. Um, torpedo tubes modification. I like this on this particular ship in slot number three. Um, the, you, don't, you do not need the turret traverse. The AA guns modification is okay, but to me, this feels like a little overkill, right? If I sink a consumable and a module into buffing my AA, that feels okay. If I start sinking multiple modules into buffing my AA and there's no planes, now it starts to feel bad, right? So now I don't like it. Um, Aiming systems wouldn't be terrible. I think torpedo tubes is passable. And smoke generator, eh, this, this has some use, right? The American smoke is already really good. If you're working with a div mate and you want to create really crazy long smoke screens for him, this is not a bad way to go. You could make this work in a div. I would not take this on my own. Consumables, yep, you're still getting damage control party. That's that beefy, beefy American smoke. And then a choice between defensive fire and engine boost. We beat this one up. I won't belabor it. Um, I like to take um, the AA flag and the flag here that will reduce my defensive fire cooldown. All in here, my defensive fire cooldown you see there is, is under 56 seconds. So my consumable is up for 48 seconds and down for 55. This is how I like to play the American destroyers when I can line all the consumables and flags up correctly. And then, you know, the standard, you know, fire... Uh, Fire buffs for the main shells, floods for the torpedoes. Um, this all the consumables reload a little quicker. Speed flag, and then we don't want to blow up. You know, if you if you got the debt flags to spend, that is definitely the way to go. Let's go have a look at some gameplay, guys, and we'll talk about how Benson performs in action. All right, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the South Spawn of North. Here I am in this tier nine game, a mid tier destroyer with an opposing carrier. And the opposing carrier is a Shokaku. That means that I'm going to keep my AA off for the most of the time. He has one type of squadron that is a real threat to me. That is the that is the rockets, if he's good. If I'm on, not on my game and he could sneak a torpedo strike in on me, that could also be bad because those torpedoes are 50 knots. So i got to stay frosty for that. The dive bombs do not frighten me. Um, and his planes, because they're Japanese, are a little on the soft side, meaning that my defensive fire will probably be good work if he comes for me. I'm spawned here on the eastern end of the map in front of a uh, friendly Baltimore and a pair of Colorados. Now, looking over the opposing destroyer lineup, I see a Z-44 and a Kid. Both of these ships have approximately my same detection. They have only the one radar, a Seattle. You see him there right in the middle of the board, well out of his radar range. That tells me that I can make a play for this cap. And the Baltimore is right behind me, so I'm going to do something just like you saw me do earlier, we are going to pop some smoke here and see what we can do to get some team play going here in World of Warships, baby. Now, I'm going to lay this smoke in a bit of a J-hook here. I'm going to run it right up the side of this island, and then I'm going to try to hook it just so I can sit right on the bottom of the cap, just at the end of the smoke, to do some spotting for this Baltimore, who has blessedly smoke picked up on my smoke and is sitting in there doing his thing. Now, I can see the Seattle moving close. 
That tells me that I'm going to want to try to creep probably a little closer to the western end of the cap to keep that island in the way so that even if he does pop a radar, his guns won't have an easy shot or he'll have a hard time spotting me, you know, getting a, getting a lock on me over the island or something along those lines. So I'm going to keep my, my throttle churning at about a quarter speed here, just spotting for the Baltimore, hoping hoping that he can uh, make an impact here early. Fire on the designated target. Seattle's coming in. I'm nearly within his radar range already. Nine and change. He's just outside of it. I'm going to go ahead and leave the torpedoes here, thinking that maybe I might catch the Seattle or the Mogami napping. Ten more seconds, and I'll have this done. I'll have this in the bag. I'm trying to move up and move up a little faster now. I'm hugging the edge because I really want to keep this island in between me and the Seattle in case he pops the radar. Right as I cap, the opposing Z-44 is spotted. Now, ordinarily, this is not a gunfight that I would accept, but Z-44 is not a gunboat. Other, even, even for most Tier 8 destroyers, Z-44 is, well, she's just really, really bad at being a gunboat. The opposing Nagato is going to take a shot, but I'm going to sit here and wait for the Baltimore radar to go up, and there it is. And so now, the, with the Baltimore sitting in smoke, radaring this guy for me, we basically get free damage. My, my gun bloom bubble doesn't go all the way out to the Nagato. Everybody else who could possibly detect me is behind this island off my starboard side. I get to just farm this Z-44 for free. He's eventually going to find his way outside of the radar bubble, but not before we've shaved off about half of his health here for his trouble. Baltimore's radar expires, and you see there, we got about we got about 12,000, almost 13,000 damage out of that guy, so he's, he's already feeling it. Now, I'm going to pause real briefly. If you have a look at the tactical situation on the map, you can tell already that we're not going to be able to control sea for very long. They have a destroyer, a radar cruiser, another light cruiser here uh, along the sea, along the 7 line at about E7, a North Carolina and an Agato working down the, the flank on the 9 line. My two Colorados south of the cap have buggered off. So it's me and a Baltimore making this play for sea against, what, about four or five enemy ships? That ain't gonna work. So I'm bailing. I'm not gonna sit out here and get radared and shot to death by the Seattle. Baltimore, unfortunately, is kind of on his own. I've done what I could for him between the smoke and everything. He's got the opportunity to be an impactful, though. He's already beat up the Z-44, and the Mogami grounded himself broadside right in front of that Baltimore. So if the Balti's on the, on, the, on, the, uh, on the ball and he's got his AP in the barrel, he can really punish that Mogami, and there he goes. So, Baltimore is not going to make it, but he took the Mogami with him. We got good work out of one of the radars. He's had a decent game already. We're up a ship. Now... While this has been going on, I have moved back over here towards the B-cap. The reason for that is, look at the mini-map. The opposing U-190 is completely alone on the north end of this cap. Our, our submarine on the south of the cap is kind of stalking him, trying to get him lit. But that U-190 has no one here to help him. If I can find that guy, my depth charges will ruin him. And he has no help. The Missouri is the closest ship. And yeah, that's possibly a bit of a risk for me because he has 9.5 kilometer radar. But as hung out as that destroy as submarine is, I'm willing to take that risk. And you see here, he's trying to go for that gap over on the northwestern corner of the cap circle. I spot him on the surface and force him down. I get a, I get get some good damage into him, and he basically now has to just run for it. But my friendly salmon off to my south has put up his submarine detection, and I think has gotten these torpedoes to lock on. Because what's about to happen is a thing of beauty. Torpedoes, dead ahead. I put some damage into him, got him to blow a damage control. This guy's going to take a torpedo, and his damage control is on cooldown. That's right, kids. He's going to flood out here in just a moment. Now, my A is still off. I'm radared now, so since they already know where I am, I'm going to go ahead and pop the defensive fire to get rid of these torpedo planes. I don't want to deal with these. Japanese torpedo planes can be a threat to you, uh, just because the torpedoes hit like trains and they move very quickly. So ordinarily, this is probably not something I would do. I would trust my maneuverability to get me away from these things. But at this point, it's free plane damage and I've got the consumables. Why not? I do end up slaughtering a few of these planes before he pulls them out. Between me and the salmon, we're going to pick up this cap. The salmon floods out the opposing submarine, just like that. We have a two cap and a two ship lead here. It's only We're barely six minutes into this game. All stations. That feels pretty good. But kind of as predicted, the team over at C, everybody has run away. C is absolutely going to fall to the opposing team. There's nothing we can do about it at this stage. A's been pretty much a stalemate over there. That's where the kid is, and I'm staying well away from that guy. 
When you're playing a Benson, fighting a destroyer with a heal is really something you don't want to do. Certainly not ever, but definitely not in an early, early in the game. If you're forced into it late game, yeah, all right, maybe. But like, you really don't. That's not something you're excited about. So, uh, an Uland or uh, you know, a uh, anything with a heal. Uh, a lot of high tier destroyers, so high tier Brits have got a heal. Uh, I know Cossack doesn't blessedly, but certainly Kid does. Man, you do not want to get in a fight with that guy. Because he'll just outlast you. He has the same main battery, the same guns, the same reload, but he has a heal. So in the end, he'll just outlast you. Posing Shukaku planes do pick me up. My A was off until then, but since I'm spotted anyway, I go and let it tick away for some free damage. And as he pulls those rocket planes out, I'll take it back off here because I do not want this North Carolina to know where I am any longer than he has to. Now, the submarine and I are about to do a bit of a dirty to this North Carolina. Submarine gets a full salvo in, and I'm going to stagger my launches here. He's going to get one rack here, and I shorted those off to his port side intentionally. I'm expecting this North Carolina to, to maneuver. He knows that I'm here. He knows the submarine is here. I'm trying to give him worse maneuvering options. He takes a whole bunch of submarine torpedoes as my first wave starts to go in. I know he's damage controlled. He basically had to. I'm sure those submarine torps landed a flood. And I'm going to catch him right here on the bow with one. Now, that flood is going to stick. His DCP remains down. You can see it there. He is flooding. Second salvo is going in. And unfortunately for me, those uh, he's got a nice, a nice gap through there. But the sub comes in with another devastating follow-up wave. My flood is still ticking. Guess who's going to get this kill? Ta-da! Three ship lead remains, although, as noted earlier, we have lost control. See, just in time for my buddy, the Z-44, to show up. And now I get to double duty here. I get to both defend my submarine from this guy and try to polish him off. He's going to go bow on to me and smoke, trying to escape. This is not a destroyer. That, he does not want to get in a gunfight with me, right? He may be tier 9, but he, just, he doesn't have the gun power to beat me in a straight-up gunfight. And I managed to get enough shells in right as his smoke starts to conceal him to polish him off. So, only two kills in 35k, but two impactful kills here. We're still working on our two-ship lead as the team is the team, opposing team is finally starting to make inroads at the A-cap on the back of that USS Kid. So now, as we're coming up on the halfway mark here, I'm going to do something a little cheeky. I'm going to get in an open water gunfight with this Nagato. Mostly because he's the last surviving ship on this half of the board, and I figure this guy has bigger problems than me. So for the next 60 to 90 seconds... I'm just going to take a million shots at this guy. Not all of them are going to land. You can see there the range is 10 and change, and I'm going to struggle a bit to find the lead to get exactly the right spot. But mainly here, like that, I'm looking for fires. I'm looking for cheap damage. Anything I can get off of this guy to help my team finish him off, because once we do, this flank of the map is ours. While I'm doing this, obviously, I'm headed back to the sea cap. I'm going to back cap that and pick it up on behalf of my team. The American destroyers can absolutely play like this. You can absolutely get into open water gunfights with stuff bigger than you when they're distracted, when they're looking elsewhere. Your guns are perfectly capable of doing that. So I'm looking at a double fire on this guy now. I'm ticking up good damage, just harassing him. That's what you have to think of this as. I'm harassing this opposing battleship. I'm giving him something else, giving him something else to think about other than the Colorado that he's shooting at off his port side. If he ever stops and turns and points his guns at me, then, yeah, I'm probably will stop firing and go dark. But he's got to wait 30 seconds, and in that time, I'm going to get off 10 salvos. I'm going to put 50 shells downrange on him in the time it'll take him to throw 8 back at me. So, yeah, his shells hit harder, but at the end of the day, I can just be a harassing jerk at the same time I'm capping. So, it's a bit of a two-for-one deal here. The opposing Shikaku comes in and cleans out that Colorado as the uh, opposing Nagato is up there, kind of squared off against our Yugamo. He's trying to maneuver a bit. Uh, I'm trying to get him off the board. I'm really looking for another fire here, but what's going to happen is uh, my friendly Lexington's going to bring in a torpedo strike. He's going to turn right into it, and, uh, well, he's going down right here about the same time as I'm going to pick up this cap circle. So now, with total control of the board and a three-ship lead, the game is no, the game is pretty well in hand, right? The opposing team does have a USS Kid. He's still very impactful. You see there he finishes off the Yugamo. But they're down to basically a very low health battleship, the one kid, and the carrier. The Shikaku is bringing his rockets back, looking for me, or the Salmon. Either one of those would be a good pickup for him. Again, my AA is off until 
He is basically on top of me and guaranteed to detect me right about there. Now I hit him with everything, right? I press my I press my carrier be gone button. I, I focus up. I hit him with all of it. And because he cannot get a strike off in 2.3 kilometers, that's not enough spin up time for him to get those rockets down range. He has to back off, circle around. And by the time he comes back with a strike, I've downed a couple of planes. This strike is not very impactful. He gets a little bit of chip damage. And at the end of the day, only I get, I get one more plane, two more planes, two more planes only. So of that, he brought in an understrength rocket strike, but only two of those planes are making it back to his deck. I'm not going to be seeing rockets again for a while. The team has cleaned up the opposing KG-5 on the opposite of the map. And now we're just looking at the kid and the aircraft carrier. So this is going to be a win. Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to end the game just yet. Cause there's at least one more engagement. I want to show you, you can see here. I'm continuing to look for the kid. He's out in front of me somewhere off my port bow. I know he's over there. The opposing die bombers are going to pick him up on the surface right there. So I know he's coming back towards me. All right. So I'm expecting now I have about 60 ish seconds or so. If he holds that course, until he makes contact with me. Presumably, he's doing two things. He's probably running from that Seattle radar that's crawling up his stern, which is smart play. And he's probably thinking if he can come over here and get into a gunfight with me, he can probably kill me and at least salvage some more XP out of what, what is otherwise a train wreck loss game for his team. I'm sort of relying on the Salmon to try to get up here and spot this guy first, but the Salmon's operating at periscope depth. That's going to make it a bit of a challenge. So now we're, I'm about 30 seconds into my estimate. I'm still expecting to find this kid somewhere off my port side here in just a minute. I have no idea where the Chicago is. He's probably screwed off to like A2 or something. He's well, well off in the end of the map. And there's the kid. And so now I am going to take this gunfight. He's got to be a few heels in. And it's late game. If I die, we're probably still going to win anyway. I'm going to smoke, slow down, and try to break contact. You can see here I've got a bit of a health lead. But he probably still has a heel left in there. But here's the trick. I don't want to sit here. Two things are about to happen. One, I'm going to vomit my torpedoes out in his general direction. Two, look at his smoke cloud. It's still moving towards me. He is still charging me at the head of that smoke. I come out of the smoke, and there he is. He's going to turn to starboard to get all his guns back into action. And when he does, he's going to turn directly into my torpedo salvo and go out of the game. He probably would have been better served to smoke and try to break contact going in the other direction. Unfortunately, that's not what he did, and so here we are. So as you can see, you know, a nice little solid game in Benson. Over 2,600 base XP, which I, I really surprised me, and I think some of that comes from the fact that I killed two Tier 8 ships and a Tier 9 ship, and I was almost solely responsible for the death of the Z-44 and the kid. So I can only assume that's where a, lot, a notable chunk of that comes from, because I only landed, what, a handful of torpedoes? Um, let me look. I only landed two torpedoes. I only shot down eight planes. I didn't have a ton of spotting damage, only a little less than 25,000. But still, it demonstrates, in my mind, a lot of the things that I've been saying about Benson. You have to jealously guard your health early. Don't accept gunfights on that are unfavorable to you, certainly not in the early game, and definitely not at any point unless the game is you know, more or less over. The only reason I'm gunfighting a kid at the end of the game is because we're going to win the game anyway, right? I wouldn't have taken that gunfight otherwise. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, your AA can be very impactful in the right situation. Know when to keep it off, know when to turn it on, and know how to use it. So, yeah, let's, uh, we'll go back for a bit of wrap-up. All right, guys, so there's our Learn to Play video for Tier 8 American Destroyer USS Benson. She has some things that she does really well, but offensively, she is a little on the gimp side. So you want to pick and choose your fights very carefully. And, um, well, I won't say lean into the torpedoes, but the torpedoes are kind of luck, Chuck. Pray, spray and pray, and, well, hopefully you land something with them. Um, they're very slow. They're very challenging to use. Uh, especially against the target, she's going to be throwing them out. The guns are really good. The handling is excellent. The AA is up to the, up to the challenge of dealing with t most Tier 8 planes. And uh, as long as you play smart, again, I'll say it again, protect your health early in a game and play for the late game, I think you'll find that you can, be, you can have some pretty solid games here in this ship. In the meantime, guys, wash your hands, be safe, and I'll catch you next time with USS Fletcher.